Uh, thank you very much, Attorney General Holder. I just wanted to follow up on a few of my colleagues' questions. Uh, you uh, were asked about evidence and if there was Miranda rights read or not. Could you just go through again uh, the, this notion that you raised at the beginning, that that's one of the considerations that you have when you look at whether you are going to use the military commissions or whether you're going to use Article Three courts? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we look at, one of the things that we consider uh, is the admissibility issue. Where can we get admitted the evidence that is going to be necessary to be most successful? And that is something that really is important in the determination that I made with regard to the use of the Article Three courts uh, concerning Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and his four colleagues. Um, I would also say that the people in the field have been making these determinations about giving Miranda warnings or not for some time now. They have had thousands of people who have come into our custody. Only a small number of them have been given Miranda warnings. And I have faith in the ability of the people in the field to make those kinds of determinations. And to the extent that there is a problem with regard to admitting a piece of evidence, and I think that's the other thing we have to remember, the trials that we will bring will not only be based on admissions, confessions, there will be other ways in which we will prove the guilt of the people that we charge. Um, so I have discretion, and I, I want to have the maximum use of the tools that um, I have been given by Congress and by the President in making these determinations, and on a case-by-case -case basis, case-by-case -case basis using the protocol that we have, um, that's what I will do. And you said at the beginning of your testimony today, you talked about how you were being as forthcoming as you could be describing your decision-making process, but you also said uh, that there was some evidence you couldn't share with us today, which I think is always difficult for prosecutors. I know this from my own work where you are, you know, explaining things to people and you want so much to tell them about the real factor that led you to a decision, but you can't until uh, the trial is going on or until the trial is over. Uh, could you expand on that a little, not telling us what the evidence is, but explaining uh, that there's some evidence that you can't discuss right now in this forum? Yeah, there is really, from my perspective, very compelling evidence that I'm not at liberty to discuss now that probably will not be revealed until um, we are actually in either a trial setting, perhaps a pretrial setting. Um, once these cases have been indicted, a judge has been assigned, motions perhaps have been filed to the extent, I, I, you know, at some point an assistant United States attorney will reveal um, that which I cannot talk about now. But the evidence that I am not talking about, as I said, I think is, is, is compelling, um, is not tainted, and I think will be proved to be decisive uh, in this case. Uh, thank you. And then I wanted to move just last to some of these general issues as we look at what you are facing, whether people on this committee agree or disagree with some of your decisions. I think we're unified in wanting to give you the tools that you need uh, to do your work. And uh, there clearly have been issues in the past. You just raised this with morale in the Justice Department. I think everyone knows that. And you mentioned and praised uh, Attorney General McKay for some of the work that he did in trying to right that ship. I certainly know he worked hard uh, with our Minnesota U.S. Attorney General's office and, and, uh, and with me and others in, in trying to fix some of the issues there. Uh, and I think that we're well on their way, as you know, with uh, um, Frank McGill and now our newest appointee, Todd Jones, uh, to do that. But could you discuss more generally uh, at the Justice Department uh, what you've been doing to work on uh, this morale issue and improvements you think have been made? Well, first, one of the things is to um, make people, again, believe in the mission of the department and to make, to reassure people that um, some of the unfortunate things that happened in the past and that are, you know, identified, I guess, in the Inspector General reports, that that's not the way in which this Justice Department is going to be run. That we go back, to, we don't, we're not going to be inventing things. It's not going to be a new way of doing things at the department. It's really going to be a return to the old ways. Um, I served as a line attorney in the Justice Department under Republican as well as Democratic Attorneys General. And... Um, had great respect for all of them and the way in which they dealt with me as a, as a career person. And that's what I've tried to reassure people at the department, that we're going back to that way, are only expected to do their jobs. There are no political consequences. There are no political litmus tests with regard to 
um, case decisions with regard to who gets to be a lawyer um, at the Justice Department. This is the way things have always been done at the department. It's the great tradition of um, a very, very special place that I've had the good fortune to be associated with most of my professional life. I think one of the things that would help with regard to um, morale, just kind of an advertisement, I guess, would be for confirmation of those remaining assistant attorneys general um, who uh, I think we have three left now. Mm -hmm. To get them confirmed, I think, would help. To get U.S. attorneys confirmed, right, I think, and would I help understand. I, I just checked this to get the numbers. We have three pending on the floor, and I'm sure you'd like to get those done, say, before Thanksgiving. That would be nice. Tomorrow would be good. Okay. Uh, and then I think there are six uh, pending before this committee. And I'm sure you would like to get those through this committee. Uh, because when I look at your workload that you're facing here, uh, not only with these uh, newest trials, but with this major investigation going on at Fort Hood, uh, with the Medicare fraud that we all want you to focus on, as every person in this country should want you to do, uh, with the new... Uh, and revived focus on white collar crime, which I think is long overdue from uh, the Madoff case, which I know um, uh, that has been uh, completed here, but there are offshoots from that, and there's other white collar cases all across the country. To not have, you know, these, have some of these nominations uh, clogged up a bit here um, uh, just cannot be what you want. And so I know I want to move forward on those as soon as possible, as well as any personnel that you need in the Justice Department. Well, I appreciate that. All right, thank you very much, and you have one more thing, center session. Uh, I offered the record a letter earlier, uh, and I failed to note that uh, from the 9-11 uh, victims that, uh, according to their letter, uh, the, when word of the letter got out, some 3,000 firefighters across the country joined us and added their names less than 24 hours after President, after Attorney General's announcement last Friday, 100,000 people signed our letter before our computers crashed. And this is the box of uh, signatures uh, and confirmations. I just feel like I should make that statement for the record uh, because I do think the victims felt strongly about it. And um, uh, they are asking that the uh, Attorney General reconsider. Well, there certainly have been um, those who have opposed the decision that I made. There have been many people who have supported it as well. I expected that um, when I made the decision. Um, these are tough decisions that an attorney general is called upon to make, and all I can do is uh, look at the evidence, look at the facts, and um, look at the law and try to make the best decision that I can, and I hope people would understand that. Uh, thank you very much, Attorney General Holder. I want to thank you for so thoroughly and respectfully answering all the questions uh, from the members of this committee. I want to thank, thank those who have been very respectful uh, in the uh, uh, gallery here as well. I know that not all of you agree with every uh, decision here, but I want to thank you for your respect and for those of you who are family members, firefighters. Thank you so much uh, for your service. And as Senator Schumer said, um, I, we can't even imagine what you've been going through. So I want to thank you for that. And I think we would all agree in this room uh, that we want uh, you, Attorney General Holder, to go back and um, whatever disagreements there may be, but to make sure you put uh, the best people on this case, uh, that they do uh, their work, uh, that we get the toughest penalties uh, here, um, and we wish you well. So thank you very much, Attorney General. Uh, the um, uh, there will be the record will stay open for one week uh, for this for this hearing and uh, the hearing is now adjourned. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.